So when we have a transformation of the plane, so we have a function with um, two inputs and two outputs. Here I'm thinking about the first output as having the name u and the second output as having the name v. Our first question is if you have some region in the xy plane, this transformation is going to turn that into another region and how do you find that region? Our second question is if you have a little bit of area over here, right, a little, little tiny region in the xy plane, what size will the corresponding region be over here in the UV plane? What kind of stretching factor gets applied here? So we want to calculate that stretching factor that's going to change the area here to this area over here in UV space. So in order to answer that question, what we want to do is zoom in on these two little regions. Right? So the, the region here and its image underneath the transformation or its image under the transformation. All right, well, here's our idea. I take one corner of this box, right? And that corresponds under the transformation, it's turned into some other corner of this region. So let's just, for the sake of argument, say it's this one. It doesn't really matter. Um, as you move out from that point in this direction, that would correspond to moving out from this point along one of these edges. Let's just say it's along this edge. Or moving up from this point would correspond to moving out along one of the other edges. So, okay, so we've got that idea. So what we want to figure out is what size vector, what vector does this one become underneath the transformation? So I know along this edge, since I have a nice um, rectangle here, that I'm only changing x as I go along here, and I'm not changing y at all. And that's going to transform to some vector here, which will basically lie along the edge of that box, as long as it's a tiny box. I'm going to call that vector S1. And then moving up from this point this direction, that corresponds to not changing x at, y at all, just changing y. So that's going to correspond to this vector here, which is basically going to lie along the side of the image of that region. OK, so that's going to be some vector. I'm going to call it S2. And what I'm looking for are the values of S1 and S2 in terms of delta x and delta y. Once I get those two vectors, I can find the area of this region, because basically this is the parallelogram defined by these two, these two vectors. And so I can put them into a matrix, take the determinant, and that will give me, up to a plus or minus sign, the area of this region. And I can, I can figure out what the stretching factor is. Now, when you're only making tiny changes, so you're making a tiny change in x or a tiny change in y, then the differential is perfect for telling me how u and v are going to change. And so remember, if u is some function of x and y, and v is some other function of x and y, then the differential du, or the change in u, is going to be approximately equal to the rate of change of f1 in the x direction, so the partial with respect to x times the change in x, plus the partial of f1 with respect to y times the change in y. So by the same token, change in v is going to be roughly equal to the slope of f2 with respect to x times the change in x, plus the slope of f2 with respect to y times the change in y. So this is just our usual differential calculation. Now, along this first vector, we have, um, we're just changing x. We're not changing y at all. And so the change in u, since delta y is 0, is just going to be the partial of f1 with respect to x times delta x. And the change in v, since delta y is 0, is going to be the partial of f2 with respect to x um, times delta x. So if we look at our vector s1 then, if we make this change in x and no change in y, then over in uv space we're going to be moving over about this much and up or down about that much. So there's going to be an f sub 1 of x times, um, let's see, that's times delta x, but also an f sub 2 partial with respect to x times delta x. I'll just factor the delta x out here. All right. And um, now, along this vector, this vertical one, uh, we're not changing x at all. So these gave me s1. To get s2, now for s2, delta u. We're going along this direction, we're not changing x at all, so delta x is 0. So this is just f1 sub y 
delta y, and delta v is going to be f2 sub y delta y. So our vector s2 is just f1 sub y and f2 sub y times delta y. Okay, so if I put these two vectors into a matrix and take the determinant, let's see, when you go to take, I'll just put them in here, so um, f, f1 sub x and f2 sub x, that's s1 right there, and then I'll put s2 in here, that will be f1 sub y and uh, f2 sub y. Okay, and I want to take, I've got here delta x times each of these and delta y times each of these, and I want to take that determinant. If you multiply a row or column of a matrix um, by a scalar, all that does is just scale the determinant. So this entire column is multiplied by delta x, and so I could just write um, the delta x after the determinant and have f sub 1x and f sub 2x. So the reason is because then if, if delta x is multiplying everything in this column, then in every multiplication you do in calculating the determinant, there's a delta x. So you could just pull it out and not multiply it till the end. By the same token, you could pull the delta y out as well. Since delta y is going to be in each multiplication that you do in the determinant, it's going to factor out. So we have f sub 1 sub y and f sub 2 sub y. And we just need to take that determinant in order to figure out the area of the new region. Now, if we look at the area of the original region, since these two were perpendicular, the area is delta x, delta y. And we apply our transformation, and we're going to get a new area. And the new area is going to be this determinant times delta x, delta y. So that determinant is f sub 1x, f sub f sub 2y minus f sub 1y times f sub 2 sub x. So times delta x and delta y. Okay, so we started off with something that had size delta x times delta y. We ended up with something that has this number times delta x and delta y. This is my stretching factor. This is how much it got stretched by. Now notice what it really is, is just the determinant of the first derivative. Remember our transformation has two inputs and two outputs, so that means that the, the total derivative matrix has uh, two, two um, rows and two columns, and these are, the exactly, these are exactly the entries that you would put in there. So the stretching factor sometimes is called the Jacobian, or the Jacobian determinant. So determinant. So it's pretty common to see this represented as J. Now you know about determinants if you if you put things in different orders. So if you switch the order in which you put these these two vectors in, it would change the sign of the determinant. And so really the stretching factor, if we just want to worry about how much it gets stretched by, we don't really care about that negative sign that might crop up. We'll just take the absolute value of the Jacobian that will be our true stretching factor, at least as a positive number, our stretching factor.